welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, I am so excited to bring back one of my dear friends, somebody who I use all the time. Um, she is my go-to biller girl. She is somebody who has her own billing company. And right now I know outsourcing and figuring out how to maximize our billing with all the changes coming through is totally something you guys are needing. So I'm super jazzed to welcome back Sarah O'Brien. She is the owner and founder of Evolution Dental Billing. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hey, Kira. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Absolutely. It's been a hot minute. I mean, we do live in the same state, but you're in <laughs> Vegas, kind of the cooler part of Nevada and I like cooler as in more hip, more up and coming, <laughs> not necessarily temperature. I'm in the temperature yeah, cool. um, and I'm over here in Reno. I feel like it feels so far away, even though we're in the same state, but surely appreciate you. You are always the girl I call guys. Like I'm not kidding when I'm in an office and people ask me like, Kira, what about this for billing? I'm like, mm, hang on, I'll get back to you. And I'm like, Sarah, I don't know. <laughs> it happens uh, often. I, I love it when you call. I'm so happy to answer questions and help people just kind of understand. It's such a mystery sometimes what is going on. So if I can offer any clarification, I'm super glad to. Well, and also if you guys haven't picked up on the fact of Sarah Sarah's like also the nicest biller I think I've ever met in my entire life. Like <laughs> sometimes billers are not as nice as you, Sarah. So the fact that you love it, you're like GSD girl, you get it done, you know your stuff, you bill for tons of offices. Um, so kind of tell us in a nutshell, like what does Evolution Dental Billing do? What kind of services do you do? Before we dive into guys, we're going to dive into documentation and how to like get your claims paid faster. So, uh, but Sarah, what exactly does Evolution Billing do? So Evolution Dental Billing is remote dental claim service. We basically try to take the entire claim from the office off of your desk into our um, lap and handle it from start to finish. So you see the patient, you post the treatment, you can either batch your claims or let them hang. Um, we'll review for common errors, submit those to the insurance companies. Um, then after they've processed and paid, we'll post your payments, whether it's check or EFT, we'll allocate those 100% accurately. We're going to document every bit of the information from the claim so that you know what it said without having to look. And then if there's anything that isn't paid, we're going to chase those down every 30 days, 30, 60, 90 days, follow up with the insurance company, figure out what they need and what they're doing and try and get those claims to process and pay. So it's 100% dental claims, 100% remote, and I feel like we've had some really good success taking that um, piece of the pie from the office teams and doing it remotely um, and offering a really good service for them. I would agree, and I refer you to several of our practices. Um, there's some other companies out there. The reason I refer you, Sarah, is because one, I know you personally, two, you do a great job, and three, like I know the human on the other side. So that's always a perk for me. Uh, and she does a great job guys. So if you're in need of that, um, something else that you didn't mention that I know you've done for a lot of our clients is, uh, if you're in a transition, like let's say you've lost your biller, you can outsource to Sarah for a while. And then when you have a new biller that starts, Sarah actually is a rock star and trains that new hire for you. So, uh, Sarah, you've trained a ton of our offices. You've helped them learn how to do it, transition them to be able to do it in-house. And I will say that that I think is something that not a lot of people are willing to do. So guys, if you are needing help, Sarah, how can they actually get in touch with you? I hate when it's like always at the end. Of course, we'll do it at the end too. But if people want, um, they're like, oh my gosh, I need you to get yeah, like five days ago. How can they get in touch with you? Just email me, Sarah at evolutiondentalbilling.com or you can call myself, 602-318-9396. 
Like, I'm not kidding. I text her at two, three, four in the morning. And as soon as she wakes up, she responds like East Coast, West Coast, wherever I'm at. Sarah is there. Uh, but guys, uh, I just am excited because Sarah, uh, one, is super proactive. So Sarah, let's dive into this. You have a really cool document, which we will attach to the show notes. And you have a documentation reference sheet. Um, and yeah. I love here on your note, you said, if it isn't documented, it didn't happen, which I agree. So kind of walk us through like why documentation and how it relates to billing and getting paid faster and all the claims like let's just kind of like dive right into this documentation. Let's. Okay. So documentation is multiple levels of important, right? Like there's your basic information. Like we need to kind of know who we saw and what we did kind of basic, but it's much deeper than that. Your documentation of your chart notes is a legal clinical document of the care that you're, be- that is being provided to your patients. It is not just um, patient came in, we put filling bonded with this material. It's actually a legal representation of the quality of the care that we're providing to our patients. And if anybody needs that, we want it to be on, not on par, above par. We need it to be something that we can present to people in the future. If they ever have need of it, that's going to showcase an outline from start to finish the who, what, when, where, why, and how. So it's super important. It's um, kind of one of the things that I preach about the most, to be totally honest. Um, It's very, very common when I look at an office's chart notes that it is a step-by-step of the procedure. Patient presents for number 30 composite, use this anesthetic with topical, place, you know, etch, bond, fill material, insert names here, which is all super important, but there's way more to it than that, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's it's supposed to be um, a, above and beyond the step-by-step of the procedure, which is why I kind of came up with the outline for the reference sheet. Um, using the SOAP note protocol is kind of the ideal method for making sure that all of that important stuff is documented. For those of you who don't know, SOAP is an acronym. It's subjective, objective, actual, and plan. So it's an easy way to remember what you need to write when and why. Subjective information is what would the patient say when they come in? What do they think they're here for? So you bring Mrs. Smith back and Mrs. Smith says, oh, I'm here for my filling. Yay. Okay, great. Patient presents for filling. Here we go. Is she having any problems? Is there any other information that the patient relays Um, while we're kind of getting them seated and prepared for the doctor to come in, what are you talking about? What are, what are you, you know, are we talking about the procedure? Are we talking about her life? If it, whatever it is, make note of it. It's a, it's a thing. Um, the next one is O for objective. And that would be what is observable. What are the existing conditions that are present in the patient's mouth that require treatment to be performed? And what methods were used to determine these. So PA of tooth number three taken whenever reveals decay of the mesial surface, also failed a previous occlusal composite, whatever it is, document what the patient comes into the operatory with so that we know their condition at that moment. If the, say the treatment plan was three months ago, and since then the tooth is fractured, or if there's um, a visible craze line, which is a superficial line in the enamel, um, whatever it is, we want to make sure that we're documenting that information clearly because there's no way to go back in time and remember it later. You're seeing, what, 10, 12 patients a day, more sometimes. And it's really hard to pin down and backtrack to to know that stuff later on. So make it part of your routine to make sure you're documenting all of the clinical observable conditions prior to beginning treatment. And I think this is a good spot, Sarah. I wanted to interject on that. Of like, this is a good spot for if it's a crown that we say that we have the intraoral photos and the X-rays taken before we're about to do treatment. Like that's how we determine these findings of PA because oh, when uh, like you don't have that PA or that intraoral photo, heaven help us all. We're not getting that dang claim paid because we didn't have it. So those types of prompts, you can totally put these in, in your notes for prompts, but I agree with Sarah, excuse me, you've got to have this in there. So people then can, we know why they're there. 
from what they're saying and also what the objective is. Guys, if you don't know soap, soap does come from the medical field. And I think dentistry could could ramp up just a skosh on our professionalism and our consistency of our notes. So I'm excited, Sarah, What what is the A for? A is for actual. That's when you're gonna list the step-by-steps of the procedure from start to finish. Place topical, what type of anesthetic, how many carbs, what brands and, and amounts, and all of those bits and pieces that actually produce the, the co- completed treatment. That's where you're gonna note the actual start to finish of the appointment. Those are your actual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then your P is the plan, which I'm always obsessed with of like, what, what's the patient's next step? Like, tell us what they're exactly. coming back for, because I can't tell you how many times as a front office trying to schedule this patient back. And I'm like, I don't even know what the heck I need to schedule them for. So this piece is super helpful. Can be your next visit. P, um, it helps with soap. So you remember the soap note, but I think it's a really, really, really good way to go through it. And it helps because then also if everybody's writing their notes the exact same way, when your billers come through and need to extract the information that they need to see, they know exactly where to look within the note rather than having to read that entire clinical note that doesn't, they don't even need 90% of it. They need right. that five to 10% to pull out of there to send on the claim. So insurance knows why we're doing this and we've got the required documentation for it. Exactly. Initially, suppose you've seen the patient and outlined treatment plan quadrant dentistry. Um, you know, quadrant two is supposed to be upper left. What if patient has a toothache in a different area? You want to note then that the next part of the plan has changed. So it's important for multiple reasons. Billers want to know it, obviously, and also your treatment coordinators are probably kind of curious <laughs> to know what's next. So mm. it's really, it's helpful. It, it covers all the bases and it presents it in an easy, easy to remember form. So uh, the soap notes are awesome. It really, really helps um, everybody kind of make sure that they're documenting that all of that important information. And then not anyone in the future, because your future self will thank you (laughs) for making note of it now. So soap notes, way to go. How many of you would just love to DIY and get the secrets of people who have been there, done that on your own time? Because I know for me, I love to learn from the best of the best, the people who have been there, done that, and can give me the shortcuts. That's why we have created our Dental A Team Virtual Academy, where it's on-demand courses for you at your fingertips, where you literally can learn the secrets from all of my experience, all of Tiffany's experience, Brittany, Dana, our entire team's experience at your fingertips. So stop taking the hard route, guys. There's a shortcut sitting there waiting for you, and it's also CE. Head on over to thedentalateam.com and click on our virtual academy. Be sure to use coupon code podcast and get started on that DIY and become the practice of your dreams. Yeah, for sure. And I think something on there that um, is important is a lot of offices might not be outsourcing billing, uh, but just imagine and get your practice to the level of pretend that Sarah is going to bill your practice's claims. Could she, without ever speaking to somebody in your practice, go into your notes, figure out why this patient was here, what the treatment was, why this crown was needed or why this filling was needed to be able to send a claim without you ever speaking to her. That is like the level of sophistication your practice should be operating at, whether you choose outsource billing or not. Because if you have that, your practice, if you have an internal biller or an external biller can get those claims paid and your patients are going to be taken care of because we've got everything documented. True or false, sorry. (laughs) True, a hundred percent. Another thing I like to kind of threaten practices with (laughs) is imagine an insurance audit. Imagine an insurance auditor coming to your practice and trying to decide whether the standard that you're keeping is where they require it to be. So if uh, some outside person were to come into your, your, your practice and pull a chart, and say the reason a crown was done according to the assistant was discoloration. Now that could be a reason for a crown, absolutely, but it would probably be considered aesthetic or cosmetic rather than a clinical condition. So making sure that all of that information, aesthetics is important of course, and you'd wanna document that, but go deeper than that. What caused the discoloration? What was the condition of the tooth that deteriorated to discolor? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, for sure. Which I think is, I mean, that's not a 
it's not a threat. It's a reality because that's ultimately <laughs> why we got to document all these. So Sarah, I think on your reference sheet, something that people don't realize is that within this documentation, there are certain things that you need to have. So Sarah, like on this sheet that you have, which you guys should totally go to the website, thedentallyteam.com, click on the podcast link and today's podcast, this is where this form will be linked for you. But Sarah has a broken down of like in diagnostic, in endo, in perio, in pros, in ortho, in financial, like what things need to actually be included in these notes and the type of things you need. So for example, like tooth by tooth assessment, risk assessment under diagnostic and evaluation, diagnosis and prognosis, diagnostic quality radiographs and photos. All of that needs to be in there. And Sarah, why are those things like you have this broken down into like the most beautiful little checklist, which I'm obsessed <laughs> with checklists because I think teams can do it. And also looking at this, I'm like, perfect. This becomes your note templates of what things need to be in there. And also you can link this to certain codes. So when they close out, this type of diagnosis and notes can actually be autoed into there of what's going on. So like, why are these things so important in the documentation? I get it. If I didn't document, I didn't do it. But how does this help me get paid or have a better patient experience? So when we submit your claims, there are certain required bits of information that have to be submitted along with the code. So for example, with a root canal, we have to make note of the condition or the diagnosis of that particular tooth. Is it irreversible pulpitis? Was there a periapical abscess? Did the decay go all the way into the nerve and the root canal was required? What was the reason for that root canal? In addition to that, they need to know how many canals and the lengths of those canals. It is one of the mysteries of dental insurance processing that who knows why they need that information. What are they gonna what are they gonna do with the length of the mesial buckle root? I don't know, but they want it. <laughs> they don't actually care. I feel like it's like taxes. They just want to create as many loopholes and hoops for you to jump through for them not to have to pay. Like, I actually don't think they care. I think they just yeah. want to make sure you check their boxes. Otherwise, we will not pay you. Yep, exactly. There's Those are the things that we're trying to um, avoid is to avoid the delays and the additional information requests and eventual denials so that those claims can process and pay in a few days rather than a few weeks or months. So um, I broke it down by kind of procedure category, endo, diagnosis, canals, and links. For perio, you want to know the perio class. If someone's coming in for SRPs, are they class one, two, three, or four? What are the bone levels? Are there horizontal or vertical bone loss? Is there recession present? Is there blood on probing or separation? Um, and what about the calculus, supra, subgingival? Is it, you know, creating all, an entire bridge, connecting all of their lower teeth? Whatever it is document clearly so that there's fewer reasons to delay. Um, for prosthodontics, whether it's removable or fixed, we have to know whether it's an initial or a replacement. If it's a replacement, please, please, please note about how long ago it was done. If the patient's like, oh, I don't know, a few years ago. Okay, well, was that a few years ago with this dentist? Try and coach them to give you more information on that because your dental plans consistently have a minimum of five years before they're going to replace the crown, whether they're the ones that paid the initial or not. So if we just kind of flippantly write patient says few years old, the insurance is not going to accept that claim. They're going to kick it back for more information and we're going to have to end up calling the patient again anyway. So you might as well document that. I think in the initial um, kind of the comprehensive exam, as you're documenting the tooth by tooth, what's existing conditions, hey, you've got a crown on this upper right side. Do you know about how long ago that was done? Lead them to that while they're in your chair and save yourself all of that hassle later on trying to get it um, from them. And that goes for partials and um, dentures as well. If they've got a partial in their mouth, how long have you had this thing? And they're like, oh gosh, since the 1970s. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, we'll make note of that. Um, that way, when when it <laughs> when the dentists decide that it is not replace are not repairable and it has to be replaced, we've already made note that it's fifty year, years old and there's <laughs> it's time for a new one. Yeah. Um, along with that goes your missing teeth. When was this tooth extracted? When you were a teenager? Was it when you know when you lived in Liverpool? Whatever it is, make note of when those teeth are removed. Um, because a lot of plans have missing tooth clauses, which says that they will not cover a procedure for a tooth that was removed prior to the plan becoming effective, which if a tooth is congenitally missing, which is a super common thing that we see, 
then we want to make sure that we're putting that in our narrative because that might be a way around the missing tooth clause. It was always missing. It's never been there. So um, again, one other thing, the buildups. Um, buildups are the biggest fight we have in dental billing. It is <laughs> like, I see a buildup on a claim and I'm like, I pull my sleeves up, I tie my gloves on, I like put my hair back, I'm like <laughs> ready for the fight. So a buildup, we need to know what percent of this tooth structure was missing after the decay and the previous restoration, after you got down to solid dentin or whatever, about how much tooth did you take away? Was it 50%? Was it 80%? Make sure that you're noting that information because we need it for your claim. And then take a picture of the tooth after all of that stuff is removed so that we can send that as well. Um, next is your ortho. What's the ortho class? Is there a crossbite, overbite, underjet, whatever it is? Um, is, the, is it gonna be regular braces, brackets? Is it gonna be Invisalign? How many months or weeks are we expecting their treatment to be? That has to be submitted with ortho claims. And if you have a bunch that are outstanding, it's probably because they don't document how long the treatment's expected to be. And then we also need to know when the ban bond or deliver date is. If the um, case hasn't delivered yet, if you make note of when it's expected to, some insurances will process and pay. Some of them will kick it back and say, please let us know when you actually give this to the patient and then we'll resubmit it then. Last but not least, the other notes that need to be included in your patient's chart are financial notes. There is much more to dentistry than putting your hands in their mouth and fixing a broken tooth. There's all of the discussions and arrangements that we make with the patient leading up to that situation. So financial arrangements, if there's a out-of-pocket cost for this, are they paying at this appointment? Have we agreed to let them pay over time? Are we breaking up the total cost of their care into payments? So that each time they come, they pay um, kind of a matching amount. So $1,000 out of pocket, $200 per visit, whatever it is, make those notes so that if you're not in the office that day, then your teammate will be able to pull it up, know where to look and know what to collect. Um, and I'm curious on that, Sarah, because I've heard mixed reviews of should those financials be in clinical notes or should they be in the like patient chart or should they be in the like an open dental in the com log what's your reasoning for putting them in clinical because I do know some offices will have like clinical signed off by the clinician and then they go back and have like a treatment coordinator at it what's kind of the reason behind putting it in the clinical note or are you just saying add it somewhere within the note for that patient so that way it's all documented Correct. It really depends on the software where it ends up. Um, as long as it's somewhere and everyone knows where, then that is 100% sufficient. If your um, clinical software requires kind of like all the notes to be in one place, then you can usually change financial notes to be a different color so that they'll stand up like green, for example, because it's money related. I don't know. Yeah, but I like it. <laughs> Um, kind of uh, just get used to having the documentation in a in a same spot every time and then that will help um, anyone if your front office is out sick and your back office is checking out are they going to know where those financial notes are located so it's another reason that I think kind of putting them all all together is a good thing perfect which I love and guys like the thing about this is Sarah said to get it paid within a week rather than a month to two months and we're not chasing money to me, that's just where we're at of like, why not do this? Why not look for ways to simplify it? And I think one of the easiest ways to do this is actually like, let's go look at our note templates. Let's see our note template set up for this. With the checklist that you guys, Sarah is so graciously giving you guys, download that, put it in your note templates, and let's ensure that it's actually going to be what you're trying to have it, it become. And then check to see, can you get your claims paid? There is a, a backside of if claims are being denied, you need to update those notes or for certain insurances as to what we need to add. Like Sarah learned about buildups, not because she um, works for an insurance company, but it's because she's literally seen hundreds and hundreds of buildups being denied and has figured out how to, to work around that. So I think create this guys. This is something you can do. That's very easy. Have a team meeting, get your notes put into play, make sure the inf information's there and then have your billing team report back of what information is needed to be added and make it very simple. Guys, this is where you can make your life very easy by spending 
one to two hours of time to get all your notes put together and everybody document in the same way to save you hours of time changing money, hours of dollars spent chasing money when you could just spend yep. two hours of a meeting. That's kind of my thought process, Sarah. Do you have any better ways for offices to implement this and make it really easy for them? No, I love the templates. I think they're super helpful. Have um, kind of have a team meeting and kind of discuss the method for the madness. So here's what we're doing. Here's what we need to know. Here's why we need to know it. Make sure everyone understands the reasons and the, you know, the, the ideal outcome, and then go from there. Um, one thing that I will say is, uh, in addition to having the information documented, make sure it's accurate. Make sure you're using the correct tooth number for what's actually being worked on. I uh, make sure you're using the correct surfaces that are actually being completed. Um, in addition to having the bare bones, make sure the meat is there as well. Yes. Amen to that. Sarah, that was super, super helpful. I appreciate it a ton. Guys, like I said, head on over to the dentaliteam.com, click on the podcast tab, uh, select this podcast, and that's where this uh, document is going to be attached. But if you guys are looking for help, you want Sarah to help train your team or to um, help you guys with outsourcing billing, again, Sarah, how can they connect with you? Because I think you are such an amazing one person. Two, you're a great resource on billing. And three, you just crush it on billing. I've had a ton of offices we've referred to you. Just say how much they value and appreciate you. So Sarah, how can they connect to you if they are like, we need billing help five days ago? Again, how can they connect with you? <laughs> uh, give me a call, 602-318-9396 or check out the website, evolutiondentalbilling.com or email me, sarah at evolutiondentalbilling.com. Awesome. Well, Sarah, I appreciate you a ton. Guys, check her out. Sarah, thanks for just being one of my favorite people of all time. I use her. I refer her. She's the best. So th Sarah, thanks for just <laughs> this information. I think it's really important for people to document and to understand why we need to document. Thank you, Kira. I hope it helps. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys, as always, thank you for listening. And I'll catch you next time on the Dentaling Team Podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time.